Okay, thank you very much, uh, Yakubo. And I want to thank uh, Azad and Yakubo and Annette for giving me this chance. So I'm going to talk about Parava will a leak. It's coming? Yeah, no, no. Oh. Have yeah, they have a line. We, we tested, it was working. <laughs> and it was working? It was working, yeah. yeah Yanis, we... Yeah, it was there. Check the... the yeah. Yeah. So this, this one it should be the one going to press, yeah. Hmm? Maybe press that one yeah, one more time. Two times. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's reading the RBG, which is the uh, yeah. So input signal not found. Oh, okay. Let me go back. Huh? Is that no? Go go to PC again. Okay. Okay. I apologize. So I want to sit here because I, I can see this screen a little bit better. I apologize for that. So we are going to talk about power leak, and I will show you a couple of examples of that. So first, let me start with a case. This is a 44-year-old man presented to our center with severe mitral regurgitation due to mitral valve endocarditis. And this case was done actually three, four days ago by Yakubo in the war. As you see, this case is a, so mitral valve is, is distorted by endocarditis, and you see a calcium in the mitral annulus. You see severe MR. And this is a nice 3D after valve replacement that Jacobo did it. You can see the mechanical valve is a anti-anatomic orientation. That's a way that usually we like the surgeon to put it that way. Now, when we put the color, you see a little paravalve leak here, you see? This one and this one, they are transvalvular leak. But this little one is paravalvular leak. So the question is, when we are in the OR and we are doing post-op echo after valve replacement, if the patient has a small paravalvular leak, what we should do? This was a question that came in that day as well. So should we leave it or should we tell the surgeon to do something? Uh, we showed it in 3D as well. And here you can see it. So very uh, small paravalvular leak between the mitral valve and the aorta. So it's an anterior aspect of the mitral valve. Early paravalvular leak is very common after valve replacement. It's about 20% of the time. So it's very common. Little leak, I mean <laughs> trace to mild leak. So this trace to mild leak usually will be seen in a patient that they are a small size patient, patient in bioparasitic valve replacement is more common than mechanical valve. Anytime that we are doing the debridement of annular calcification, there's a chance of valve leak post-op. Older patient, because they have a calcium, redo valvular surgery, reconstruction of the aortic and mitral annulus, and it is a little bit more common in MVR than AVR. This is a nice paper about this. Outcome of mild periparasitic regurgitation detected by intraop T. So this is always a question in the war that should, what should do it. They followed about 608 patients for two years. And they saw from these 600 in the war, 113 of them, they had a power over leak. Trace to mild. Not, we are not talking about more than mild. Trace to mild. From 113 patients that they had a small paravalvular leak in the OR detected by T, only one patient went to severe leak in future and they had to do valve replacement. So only one. So trace to mild paravalvular leak in the OR, just leave it. Nothing will happen. Okay, that's my first message. Second, what about late paravalvular leak? Late paravalvular leak is a different story. So, Early paravalvular leak in the OR is mainly technical problem. Technical due to the surgeon, technical due to the patient, calcification, other things. But late paravalvular leak is not a technical or surgical problem. 
is a lot of time because of the calcification and the abridgment and, and the dehiscence of the valve or endocarditis. So they followed in a study, this is studies from Italy, 2,680 patients that they had a mechanical valve replacement. They followed them for mean follow-up of about six months, uh, six years. Out of these 2,680, 251 of them, they had reoperation during this follow-up time. And that 251, 131 of them, they had paravalvular leak or dehiscence of the valve. So late dehiscence of the valve is about 0.5% of all mechanical valve replacement. I couldn't find really a paravalvular leak in bioprosthetic valve, how it will happen in the long run. This is a paper for mechanical. So these are the patients that we are going to show a couple of cases right now. They are late paravalvular leak. So how we define the degree of leak or degree of the regurgitation, we go based on the guideline, the guideline of native valve regurgitation that we have it in 2017, and the guideline of prosthetic valve assessment that is 2009 is a little bit old. And this new guideline that is evaluation of the after percutaneous valve repair, like a TAVI, as uh, Jacobo was showing, or uh, trans uh, catheter mitral valve replacement, for example. So these three guidelines, like this one is a TAVI that already was shown, and how we define the TAVI part of our leak. So this is orientation of these three valve, or four valve, exactly as a model that Azad was showing. So this is a fibrous skeleton that will bound these three valves together, aorta, mitral, and tricuspid. And some people believe that pulmonic is part of this skeleton. Some surgeons believe that is not, like our surgeon, Dr. Tyron David, believe this is not, this is outside of the fibrous skeleton. Anyway, this orientation, as Azad was showing, we have to have always this in our mind to see where is the paravalvular leak. Actually, this image that I'm showing you, we can develop it in 3D. This is, again, one of the very old 3D of my center, my previous center in Saudi Arabia. And we, we saw all four valves together. You see the uh, aortic valve, tricuspid valve, and mitral valve. This mitral valve is stenotic as well. So we can develop the same cut that we had it in our model by the 3D. How we localize the place of the uh, regurgitation of paravalvular We have to create some common language with our surgeon, because we are dealing in the OR, or with our interventionist in the cat lab. <coughs> so first of all, we developed this map, as Azad was saying, very, very old time. And then we have to create a map for other valve as well. That will be my next work with Azad, probably. But anyway, for localization, we have to give a good address to the surgeon or the interventionist. And the best address will be surgical view and clock face orientation. So this is a clock face. This is a mitral valve, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. That's the best way. So we can tell, for example, the interventionist or the surgeon, there is a leak of the mitral valve at, clock, at 2 o'clock, for example. That's the best way to tell it. Also, we can address to the the adjacent uh, anatomy as well. Say, for example, it's beside the tricuspid valve, beside the mitral valve, or something. This is a surgical view of all of the valve. Again, this morning we were talking about that. We have to create the surgical view of the all valve. We have it for mitral valve for a long time, but for other valve, we have to develop it. So this is surgical view. This is one of, again, one of our case. So this is surgical view of the mitral valve on fast view. Appendage is always in your right si left side. Surgeon is standing here. Aortic valve is here. Medial is here. This is a surgical view of the aortic valve. It's not always <coughs> easy to get it, but you can get it. This is one of our case. So this is the non-coronary cusp, left coronary cusp, right coronary cusp. RV is here. RA is here. LA is here. So this is surgical view. Interactive septum is here. So always surgeon is standing beside the non-coronary cusp. So this is, again, the view for aortic valve and for prosthetic aortic valve as well. 
This is surgical view of the tricuspid valve. So in surgical view of the tricuspid valve, again, we have a couple of landmarks. First of all, the septal leaflet is beside the surgeon. So that's the reason that uh, Professor uh, Edward was talking this morning. This leaflet, the septal leaflet, should be beside the surgeon. Surgeon is standing here. So this is surgical view. The landmark for anterior leaflet is RA appendage. This is the RA appendage. The landmark for posterior leaflet is SVC. And the landmark for septal leaflet is coronary sinus. So always we have to have a landmark when we are showing something in 3D, as Yakub was talking this morning as well. Anything you want to show in 3D, you have to have some landmark. One important landmark is surgical view should be, and some anatomy. Otherwise, you cannot convince the people. You cannot sell your picture to the surgeon. Pulmonic valve is difficult, as they were showing this morning. So this is a pulmonic valve. But the good thing is, when they replace the pulmonic valve, it's easy to take it. So this is, uh, because we, we are showing to mainly for replacement, there is a tough, uh, for example, or other pulmonic problem. So this is a pulmonic valve, the same regular view. And we can have a very good unfast view. So of, if you have this unfast view, again, if there is any pre-valvular leak, paravalvular leak of the pulmonary, we can show it as well. OK, now let me show you a couple of cases. So this is a case that had previous bioporistic mitral valve in our center, again, in Saudi Arabia. And you see a leak here. So again, how it looks like in 3D? It's like this. And as you see, this is a, our 3D in 2009. It was not very good. But we were learning, so we didn't have all of this facility that you have here. We learned in the Middle East ourselves. So this is the uh, small dehiscence of the valve here beside the aorta. And we gave this address to our interventionist. OK, you see the leak, even the size of the leak. And our interventionist went from the aorta, because it was closer to the aorta. You see, as, as you see the previous picture, it's just this is the aorta. It's just beside the aorta. So if he goes, he or she goes from the aorta, can come here easily. From aorta to the LA side. So he went there, and he put the plaque. This is a, like a PDA device, and he closed it. So it is very important to give the right address. The case, case number three is a 68-year-old uh, man underwent bioprostic MVR in our center three years ago. His MVR was implanted as top hat. Top hat is anytime you have a lots of calcium in the mitral annulus, surgeon will put the valve at the top of that calcium, we call it top hat. So this patient developed paravalvular leak. As you see here, you see the bioprostic valve is in the LA side, and leak is here. Looks a small leak, but it's bigger than this. You will see it more now. OK, very severe, you see? Sweep the picture, OK. Then 3D. So we showed it nicely in 3D. See, the valve is dehisced from here to here. Here is the tricuspid valve, here is the aortic valve. Tricuspid and aortic valve. The entire anterior part of the valve is dehisced. So surgeon said this already, second surgery do, I cannot take it. And we asked our interventionist to close it. To close, you have to give them a guide in the cat lab. So surgeon decided to close this big gap also was very difficult uh, by a device that we call it Ampelatzer Paravalvular Leak Device. Uh, is approved in uh, Middle East in the Europe. I think in FDA is approved as well. So anyway, uh, that's a leak. And we see the leak in different angle. Uh, so we discussed the case in heart team, and we decided to go by and device it. So we close that leak with this device. There's a rectangular shape uh, PLD device. And you see, important part is this device has to cross from RA to LA. So we have to uh, guide the uh, interventionist. It's not like a mitral clip, because this is more anterior. So again, as uh, Jacob was talking, explain is very important here to see that you are going inside the LA. You are not going outside of the heart. And this is OK. The device is in the catheter is in wrong place at first. And then we told them. And they next time they attempted, they went in the right place. And they put this device. Also, not perfect result, 
but it is less, so we accept it, okay, and patients survive. Case number four is a 47-year-old female with a history of MVR and TV repair, 16 years ago, presented to our center with severe shortness of breath. See, again, this case has a severe power leak from two sides. Again, we have to tell them from where it's coming. You see the valve, valve is not very clean because it's a valve of 16 years ago. If this valve was new, when you do 3D, you see all the suture as well. But this valve is old. So again, we have to give address to interventionist or surgeon to fix it. Here, you see it. Okay, you see big leak is here beside the aorta and another very big leak beside the appendage. So intervention said, I cannot close it by the device. And surgeon said, I will took it, take it to the OR, but I will resuture it. I will not replace it because, again, it's a second set we do. I will resuture it based on your address. So the best way to give the address is a 3D. You say one big leak is at around 2 o'clock and one very big is around 9 o'clock, for example. So surgeon went there and based on that address or map that we gave them, uh, he closed it, Victor Najam, our surgeon, he's in Cleveland now. So he closed it based on that address, and you see, no leak at all. So that's the beauty of the 3D. You can give exactly. I remember when I was going to OR, sometimes they were putting the device and say, there's no hole. I said, I could say, it's just that place by my finger. <laughs> Go and close it, okay? Uh, case number five, 18-year-old boy with endocarditis had mitral valve repair and very nice result after the repair. One year later came with shortness of breast, severe MR. So what's the problem? You will see it. It's no valve here, huh? had a valve repair, no, no prosthetic valve. Here you see it, something is here at the middle of the mitral valve. Big dehiscence, you see? This is the ring and ring moved entirely towards the aorta. So it's a posterior dehiscence of the annulus, annular ring, and usually happens most of the time in posterior aspect of the ring, if you want to have a dehiscence. So big MR is coming from there. Again, we discussed it. Our intervention is said, I can go and close the valve by mitral clip. You, you don't have to close that hole. Just close it by mitral clip, you will decrease the MR. And uh, at the end, we decided to go to the OR and, and take the ring out. I just want to show you that how it looks like at the his ring. You see, this is a posterior. It's exactly the place that we showed by 3D, from here to here, from posterior. Okay, this is a surgical aspect. And he, he re repaired this one. So this is the last case, 55-year-old man with history of mechanical <coughs> AVR one year ago. This is from here. We had it a couple of days ago. This is a mechanical aortic valve. So I showed more mitral because I told you it's more common in mitral, power leak. So this is a power leak from mechanical aortic valve. I don't have 3D of this. Uh, so you can see it, this power leak from here. You can see it from here. And this valve was replaced by a bioprosthetic valve. So in summary, Trivial or mild power leak is a common finding in OR. The clinical outcome and natural history of trace to mild power leak is benign in majority of the case, and we, have, we don't have to be worried about that. Late power leak due to dehiscence of the valves is the most common indication for operation in long-term follow-up of the patient with mechanical valve. So it's the most common cause for reoperation in a long-term uh, follow-up of mechanical valve. Cardiac imaging technique, especially 3 dt plays an essential role in the diagnosis, a special orientation of the leak, guidance of the surgical or percutaneous intervention, and evaluation of the outcome. Thank you very much.